I'm Marissa from beautifullyorganized.com and today I'm going to share with you 10 more simple tips to save money. Now we have done a 10 tips part one to this video so if you haven't seen it yet I'm going to link it in the description box below. Please remind me if I forget because sometimes I forget after I've said that um, but I'll link that video and you can watch that as well and then you'll have 20 tips on how to save money easily. The first tip is to pretend that coins don't work anymore. So every time you come home with change in the form of coins, stick them in a jar, pretend they don't work anymore, pretend they're not legal tender, let them build up, and then every month or two, take them down to the bank and deposit them. You can deposit coins into ATMs now and put that money in your bank account and then, whoa, Christmas is paid for by the end of the year. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. You can save silver and gold or just gold and just silver. We save everything. We save everything. Because, you know, you don't think about it after a while. You just put it away, deposit it regularly, and then bam, Christmas is paid for, or a holiday is paid for, or you can get those nice new shoes you were looking at. Anyway, yeah. Tip number two is to buy the cheaper brands. When you go grocery shopping, don't buy the brands that are eye level because they're the most expensive brands. Buy the brands of the at the top of the shelf and down the bottom of the shelf and they're usually cheaper. They're not necessarily going to be the big brand names, but you know what? They don't have special factories where the brand name makes this and then there's like a home brand factory next door. They're made in the same factory a lot of the time and they're just labeled differently. So you're getting the same type of food, but you're not paying as much money for it. So stop buying brand names. Buy the higher or the lower um, or go to Aldi. They have just as good products there, but less choices and lower prices. You can get a can of diced tomatoes there for less than a dollar and you'd normally pay two or three times that at Coles. So definitely worth not shopping by brand names anymore. The quality is not going to be much different. The taste isn't much different. Trust me. But the money you save, whoa, very, very different. The next tip is to do less washing. This is going to sound gross to some of you, so if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But hear me out. If you wear your clothes twice or more before you wash them, then you don't have to wash them as much. And if you don't have to wash them as much, then you don't use as much energy or water or laundry powder throughout the year. And then you save money and you save time and effort. Most of us don't get our clothes really, really dirty every day. We're not working outside in the farm and trudging through the mud and getting all dust and dirt all over ourselves and then coming home and having to strip off and getting the shower straight away. Most of us are relatively clean people, even after a full day of work. And you know what? I don't know about you guys, but a lot of the times I wear like a little singlet under my, see, I've got that now, like a little slip under my shirt. That's against my body. This shirt, yeah, it is on the arms, but my arms aren't that dirty. So I can wear this shirt at least twice before I have to wash it. It doesn't smell bad. If I get a big stain on it, yes, I'm going to wash it then. But most of the time I don't. And when I'm cooking, I wear an apron anyway, so I don't get very dirty. And kids don't even get that dirty. Your kids could wear their school uniforms more than one day in a row. So do less washing. Wear your jeans three or four times before you wash them. They feel more comfy then anyway. You'll save yourself time, effort, and money. My next tip is to wait one more day before you wash your hair again. And then over time, you'll save two or three bottles of shampoo a year, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you think about little hacks like that, they all add up really fast. So if you wash your hair every two days, stretch it out to a third day. I wash my hair once every seven days. Sometimes people think that's gross. But no one ever comes up to me and like goes to give me a hug hello and then goes, ooh, you smell bad. Nobody. So either my friends are really, really polite um, or I, my hair smells fine. There used to be, it used to be 100 years ago, I think it was like you'd have a shower. I don't even think they had showers. Did they have showers 100 years ago? But you'd wash yourself once a week. I'm just talking about your hair. So you can wash your hair and straighten it and wear it like that for a couple of days and then you can curl it and wear it curly for a couple of days and that kind of livens it up a bit. You can pop a bit of dry shampoo in there if you want to. I don't bother, but you can if you want to. Um, and then for the last couple of days, just put it up. Put it up in a ponytail and then put it up in a bun. Stick a hat over it. But yeah, wash your hair less. Less uh, shampoo, less conditioner, less water in the shower because your showers are shorter because you only have to have a long shower once a week if you're me. Um, you're buying less hair products and you're saving money on water and you're saving effort and energy because you don't have to have the light on as long when you're having a shower. Anyway, it all adds up. So yeah, wash your, stretch your hair out further. Wash it less. My next tip is to grocery shop with a list and a budget. And... 
a calculator. If you have a shopping list, you're not going to do random purchases. And it's the random purchases that are usually the $4, $5, $6, $7 purchases, right? You don't randomly purchase one extra $2 bag of rice. You do randomly purchase a $4 packet of biscuits because they look really good, right? So do a grocery list, shop to the list, stick to your budget, and take your calculator so you can add up as you go and make sure you don't get to the checkout and have to put things back. So that's embarrassing. Although I have done that myself before um, and it worked out fine. Nobody really minds, you know. I remember once I was grocery shopping and I had my mobile phone and it had my list on it and I was trying to calculate as well and then the battery died at the end of the shop so I didn't actually know what the total was. Um, but yeah. Oh, and I think I forgot one or two things on the list but you know what? We coped that week. We just did without. Maybe it was tissues. I don't know. Anyway, I'm rambling. <laughs> Stick to your list. Stick to your budget. If you're worried that you'll go over budget and you, most people worry that they'll get to the checkout, they'll be over budget and it will be embarrassing so they'll just swipe the card and pay the extra for the groceries. Um, so pay in cash and only take the amount of cash you need. And then you have no choice and you'll realize it's not actually that embarrassing to have to put back a bottle of wine. It's not fun, but it's great on your budget. You save the money. So yeah, stick to a list, stick to a budget, take your calculator and take cash. My next tip is to give up most of your streaming services. So these days in Australia, there's Netflix, there's Stan, there's Amazon Prime, there's Apple TV. They're all paid services. I feel like I've left another one out. Hey You is a paid service. Acorn TV is a paid service. There are so many paid streaming services. And yes, they have tons of good shows. But you know what? Most of the time, we tend to stick with one service anyway, and we get, because they always recommend new shows when you finish watching an old show, and so you tend to just use Netflix the whole time, or use Stan the whole time. So, just do one streaming service at a time. There's a couple of things you can do here. You could maybe, if you don't want to only have Netflix, you could go, okay, fine, in the summer we have Netflix, in the autumn we have Stan, in the winter we have uh, Apple TV, and in the spring we have whatever it is that I forgot to say. Amazon Prime? Did I forget that one? Anyway, so you could change them seasonally. Just cancel your membership. You can sign up again later. It's fine. They don't. No one ever goes, oh, you cancelled three quarters of a year ago, so we're not going to let you sign up again. We don't want your future money. Nobody says that. You can sign up again in the future. So cancel all your streaming services, but one if you really want to keep it. But you don't actually have to even have any paid streaming services if you don't want to. In Australia, you can watch... Streaming services for free by going to the 7 Plus app. You can go to the 9 Now app. I don't know about Channel 10. I want to say 10 Play, but you might have to pay for that one. But 7 Plus is free. 9 Now is free. SBS On Demand is free. ABC iView is free. There are so many shows just on those. You can have free streaming if you want to. You don't have to pay 10 bucks a month for every streaming service, which is 40 bucks a month, which is... 12 times 4 is 48, $480 a year that you're paying for shows and I bet you're not watching all of them. So cancel some of them, save yourself some money. My next tip is to stop buying lunch at work because when you buy lunch at work, you pay a minimum of $10 and that's usually just for a sandwich. And then you pay an extra $3 for a drink. It's crazy and you're probably not full anyway. Don't bother, don't bother buying your lunch anymore. Just take your leftovers from the night before or take a sandwich and a snack like we do with our kids' lunch boxes or, you know, take some crackers and some veggie sticks and some, something. Take something from home. You could go and buy a huge packet of chips at Aldi and then you take it home and you portion it out and you just take a handful a day and stick them in a container and then you still get chips at work too. So you're not paying $3 for a packet of chips in the vending machine. You've got chips in your lunchbox ready to go. Yes. You might feel like a bit of a baby eating out of a lunchbox, but also then, hey, you seem really young and cool. You're not super old and frumpy, so there you go. <laughs> Seriously, stop buying lunch. Stop buying lunch. It's too expensive. You can save all of that money. You don't have to spend $50 or more at lunch every week. That $50, $10 a day, five days a week, 50 that's $200. That's $200 a month just on lunches. Is that right? $50 a week, four weeks in a month, that's 200 bucks. 12 months in a year, that's 12 times 200, that's $2,400 on lunches. That's crazy. Stop spending $2,500 a year on lunches and start using that money to go on a nice holiday or to have a debt-free Christmas. 
Can you imagine how much more fun that is? Yeah. Now my seventh tip is a tiny one. You're not gonna feel the difference immediately, but over time things will change. Unplug your chargers when you're not actually charging anything. Or better yet, turn your electricity off at the power point instead of letting it run and letting everything run on standby. You can get these cool connector things now where you just plug all your, like your TV and your, your DVD player and your printer from the home office and your vacuum cleaner, you plug it all into one thing and then you just press one button and it turns off the source power for you. I'm sure you can get those, I just don't know where. But anyway, you can Google it. But basically, you, you can just turn everything off at the power point and you'll save a ton of money in the long run over the next couple of years. Or you can unplug your phone because when your phone charger is plugged in and turned on but you're not actually charging your phone, you're still paying for that electricity. Why? Why do you want to pay for nothing? So turn it off. My ninth tip is to stop paying for your gym membership because most of us pay for a gym membership and then we don't go. And just go for a walk outside. It's really nice out there. Or do your workouts on YouTube in your lounge room. Connect it to your TV and do the workout totally for free with YouTube. Or use one of the apps on your phone. Or, oh, there's this really cool app that I used to use that was like, a zombie apocalypse role play. And so I would go walking and it would track how far you were walking and tell you how long it would take to get to the nearest safe zone. It was really cool. It's a little bit da daggy if you don't like that sort of thing, but it motivated me to go for a walk. So yeah, it was really, really good. Ditch the gym membership. Don't pay for the gym. No offense if you own a gym. Not everybody's gonna ditch their gym membership. I'm not saying gyms are gonna close a result, as a result of this video, but if you're looking to save money, cancel your gym membership, work out at home, do your workouts on YouTube, or go for a walk outside, or ride your bike. My very last tip, our 10th tip for today is when you're going to buy something, ask, is that your best price? So if you're buying something off Gumtree, or if you're buying something off Facebook Marketplace, you, or if you're going to the farmer's market, uh, you don't have to be pushy about it. Um, I'm an introvert. I am a people pleaser, so I'm not great at this, but it's so worth it to just do that one sentence. So when you're going to buy something, if you're interested in it, um, just say to the person, okay, cool, is that your best price? And see what they say. Do that little awkward pause after that. Is that your best price? And then they will answer you. And sometimes they will say, yeah, I can shave $5 or $10 off. Great, if you do that for every purchase, you can save hundreds over the year. So yeah, us them is that your best price i hope you found those tips helpful if you did please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and i will see you in the next video bye